Don't worry, we got the cat away from the bat. In this video, we're going to give you a close look at a bat and talk about how to get a small bat out of the house. I've done that several times in this house and in another house that I lived in with just a towel. Keep in mind though, the bats can be larger and they can also carry diseases like rabies and their feces can carry bacteria that can be very harmful to humans. So if you want to play it safe, go ahead and call animal control. Otherwise, uh, bats that are about the size of a mouse with wings and brown, they're very common in the United States and other places. And again, I've had a lot of success getting them out of the house safely with just a towel. Now we'll go ahead and take a look at that bat again. And you'll notice that he is injured, which made this one very easy to handle. Um, and we're almost certain that that injury was pre-existing, not from the cat. The left wing is damaged. See that? Yeah. It's like it's all ripped to crap. Oh, oh, oh. Try to get the eye. If you've got a bat in the house, it's either flying or landed or going back and forth. Uh, sometimes the bats will fly from corner to corner or in figure eight patterns in the house and they will go a long time without landing. That's a little bit more difficult situation. Let's first talk about a bat that will either fly in the land or stays landed like the one that we had this last time. Uh, what you'll want to do is throw a towel over it. Once the towel is over it, if it's on a flat surface, then you can grab the bat loosely, not too tight, and then wrap the towel around. At that point, the bat is not likely to struggle. It will stay in the towel quietly, actually, and usually be content in there. Then you can take the towel outside. Once the towel is outside, open the towel up and leave it for the bat to leave it won't necessarily come off easily. It might fly away or it might cling to the towel. And you're not going to want to try to get it off. Just leave it to get take it to leave by itself. Now, now many times the bat isn't going to be nice enough to just land on a horizontal surface where you can throw the towel over it. It may hang from a doorway or a rafter, any place high. Uh, in that case, if you take the towel your two hands like this, and let's say that's our bat. We're going to grab it lightly and then wrap the towel around it. He's not going to fight. And then you can just take this outside and release it. 
use leather gloves and long sleeves for additional safety. When you do take the towel out to release it, it's advantageous for the bat if you can place it at a, an elevation of waist higher or a little bit higher than that um, so that it can easily fly off. Um, sometimes the um, V in a tree or maybe even on the trunk of your car or something uh, is an option so that the when the bat takes off it can fly off easily from the ground is a little more difficult for the bats. Now if you've waited a while and the bat doesn't want to land you've got a few options to uh, still be humane to the bat and safe. Um, although it's strongly encouraged to just wait till the bat lands. If it's taking a long time and you don't have the patience for it uh, one option, if you can seal off the room and you don't need the room immediately, you can seal it off. If it's at night especially, then the bat might be active. During the day, most likely it's going to land someplace in the room. Seal off the door because the, the uh, just like mice, the bats can get through small openings. Then uh, come back during the day and you're going to have to hunt and hunt and hunt. It might be difficult. Um, otherwise, and this is not recommended, but if if you don't have the option of waiting, you can use the towel as sort of a net to, to get the bat down from in the air down, and you can use a second towel to grab it or use the same towel to grab it. Um, but this could cause injury to the bat, and it's a little bit uh, freaky to actually go through that. I have had to do that before, though. Um, and... Uh, I would recommend staying away if at all possible from things like brooms and that kind of thing because you will more than likely uh, injure the bat and um, th this is any type of thing like this is raising the risk to the bat and yourself. Now with this particular bat we did have an extra challenge uh, in that it's winter and it's injured so uh, we didn't really want to be responsible for throwing it out in the cold to just die. Um, there's probably not much this bat can do with the, the messed up wing, but uh, we did leave it wrapped in the towel in such a way that the towel is open enough that it can get out and uh, tuck him in between uh, two brick walls in a brick structure that I have in the backyard that's a small uh, stack of bricks for grilling we're not going to be doing any grilling in the winter so he's going to be fine in there and we did check he's not frozen or anything it's been over 24 hours and he's fine we, we just touched his head and he did a little bit of a wiggle so we're thinking he has a pretty good chance of hibernating right in there it's maybe even more ideal than some other bats that are still outdoors so we're, we can be happy about that